Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Karl Sosa. I'm the CEO of uh, Ultimovax. Ultimovax is a publicly listed company in the Euronext Oslo Stock Exchange. And uh, that's why I need to show you the slide. And we are located in Oslo and also have a team in Uppsala. So what does Ultimovax do? We, Ultimovax is operating in the field of immuno-oncology with the uh, next generation universal uh, cancer vaccine uh, with several benefits, uh, among them the fact that it is easy to administer just as intradermal injections. It's also uh, a truly off-the-shelf product ready to be administered when needed. And we basically stimulate, educate the immune system to recognize cancer cells and we are used in combination with checkpoint inhibitors. We improve the efficacy of checkpoint inhibitors. As you know, checkpoint inhibitors don't kill cancer cells. They just block their defenses. So you need an active immune system to penetrate the tumor and kill the cancer cells. And that's, and that's what we do. Uh, we basically, our goal is to be used as a backbone across multiple different cancer indications, and in combination with different uh, uh, treatment uh, um, schedules, depending on the, the, the tumor that we are treating. We are basically targeting an enzyme that is present in 85 to 90 percent of the, of the cancers across multiple uh, uh, cancer types. We have already for uh, uh, some time, you know, phase one uh, studies showing a very good uh, safety profile and immu also immune maintain immune activation. We, after seven years, we still see T cells that were Im immune activated from uh, seven years earlier when the patients were uh, vaccinated. And the data that we received from uh, uh, two of these phase studies were submitted to the FDA and we received the melanoma, malignant melanoma, fast track designation, orphan drug designation. Um, I think what uh, separates us, you know, at this moment is, although we are a small company, 25 people, uh, we have quite a broad and ambitious phase two program, as I will show you, uh, with five uh, phase two studies uh, running in five different indications that when completed will enroll more than 650 patients, you know, across uh, 100 hospitals in 15 countries. And most excitedly uh, for us is that basically we are around the corner. We expect uh, two phase two studies to have read out now in the first half of 2023. So just uh, briefly on the financial part, we were uh, did the IPO in 2019. Uh, we had two direct uh, investments after that, all oversubscribed. I think the good news in these uh, very uh, volatile times is we have a cash position of uh, 600, you know, roughly uh, 470 million NOC what gives us a runway to the first part of 2024. So very good place to be, you know, when, uh, when now these volatile times are very difficult to raise cash, but particularly because it takes us um, across a period of time where we are going to start to get readings from these phase two, uh, two studies. We have a very strong group of, uh, of owners. These are the, the, the top uh, uh, family funds in, in Norway, the Norwegian Pension Fund, several institutions, and basically all, all of them, you know, long-term perspective, very supportive of the company. In terms of um, pipeline, you see there we have uh, UV1 is our lead product, and then we have a, a, a platform technology as an adjuvant technology, and that is now also in prostate cancer, but I will focus my presentation on the, on the UV1, our lead asset. As I mentioned to you, we have uh, uh, two phase ones in malign melanoma that are completed. Uh, and this is, I will show a little bit of data. This is what gives us the fast track designation. And then we have our lead indication melanoma. We have an um, initium study. Um, we enrolled these patients, 156 patients, starting in June 2020, and we finish in June 2022. So we enrolled the full study during the COVID, the pandemic, and this was a great achievement of the team because, uh, you know, as you know, this was a very difficult times for, for farmers and biotechs to enroll patients. And then we received a lot of interest from lead oncologist groups and, and pharma. So we have then the other, the other studies in mesothelioma where, um, you know, Bristol-Myers Squibb supplies 
epilimumab and nivolumab. In ovarian cancer, uh, it's the Nordic Society of Gynecological Oncology and European Umbrella, where AstraZeneca supplies turvalumab and olaparib. And uh, the most recent study to be added to this group, the non-small cell lung cancer, um, in all to, to be happening in Norway. But I will give you a little bit more details. Let me show you just some of the exciting data that we received so far in phase one, of course. We are conscious this is a non-comparative study. Uh, we have now going to have soon the, the, the comparative data. But what you can see here is in this study, in combination with pembrolizumab, 10 out of 30 patients completely eliminated the tumor. And these are all new first-line metastasized malignant melanoma patients. And an additional seven had a partial response. So this gives us an objective response rate of 57%. If you compare that with historical uh, data for pembrolizumab alone that you see there in the graph, you see these are very, you know, uh, exciting data, at least giving us the, the confidence to move forward. Particularly when you look at uh, complete responses. This was really surprising also for the investigators that we had more complete responses than partial responses. Um, the, the other big uh, piece of data that is very important is uh, excellent uh, safety profile. Basically, with the exception of uh, injection site reactions, the side effects are what will be the side effects of the checkpoint inhibitor. What is very important in, in these days because we have multiple combinations um, of uh, drugs to treat these patients. And do you see the same thing in terms of overall survival? You know, at 12 months, at 24 months, and now recently we also communicated for the first cohort, 71% uh, overall survival after three years, you know, versus the historical data for pembrolizumab of 50, 51%. And, um, and uh, the same thing in terms of uh, medium progression free survival, you know, almost twice the one for pembrolizumab alone. Of course, very, very exciting data, but, you know, to, to be now confirmed in the, in the very broad uh, program. So, again, uh, lead indication, uh, malignant melanoma, study fully enrolled. We expect data now first half 2023. In, uh, in NIPU, in mesothelioma, we are uh, only 10 patients away from completing. Uh, this one is in the US and Europe. This one, Europe and Australia. And also we expect uh, uh, the top line results first half 2023. The focus trial is more than 50% recruited in um, head and neck cancer in combination with pembrolizumab. And the most recent to start enrolling the Duvac in ovarian cancer and the LungVac in non small cell lung cancer. So as you see, you know, we are going to have basically a very, very rich period of data. And this is just to show you that we are combining with uh, four out of the top five checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors are the fastest growing class in all of pharma with, with a 5% uh, CAGR and expected to reach in four or five years, you know, $70 billion. As you know, through the uh, pembrolizumab alone uh, sells, you know, approximately $18 billion per year. So we are not going to be competing with these, uh, with these companies. We are going to be used in combination with their products. So we see that even a small percentage of this market is already very healthy. So, you know, as a company, we, are, uh, we, we have a good reputation of delivering on what we promised the market. And, uh, and as you can see, uh, but of course, exciting period is going to be the first half of 2023. If, um, you know, as we all expect a positive data, this will trigger a series of activities from a regulatory perspective, of course, discussing what we're going to do next. But if the data is very positive, we will discuss with the authorities the possibility of getting accelerated or conditional approval. As you know, that means that you can start selling the product in that specific indication while you run phase three. But also we have been in touch with, uh, um, you know, a strategic partner. We've been very public saying that we are prepared as a company uh, to move forward in development. You know, maybe we want two indications, but we believe for the benefit of patients that uh, a big pharma company could and has all the pieces in place to then initiate five, six, seven different phase three studies in multiple indications. And we have been in touch with uh, these farmers and basically the only thing that they are waiting is, uh, for is the data. Um, and, um, you know, so as in summary, I think as a company, we have a very good positioning in the, the space of, um, of immuno-oncology and in, in, in the space of cancer vaccines.
uh, a lot of excitement too, because if we have positive data, as we all expect, this will be the first time that we can prove that cancer vaccines have a role in, in a controlled uh, studies. Um, and, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, commercial potential. We are well financed and we are really very excited to waiting for the data that is, as I mentioned, just around the corner. And with that, I want to thank for your attention and I'm open for any Q&A. You have five phase two studies. What are the pros and cons of running so many clinical trials at the same time? Well, you know, the, the, the cons are more on the, the, the heavy, heavy work for the team, but they, they are delivering quite well. I think the benefits are very clear, you know, in a way for an investor, we are not just running one clinical study. So it's, you know, we are not saying that we are going to get positive data in the, all of the five, the five studies, but we only need one positive to prove the concept that our vaccine really improves the efficacy of the checkpoint inhibitors. And of course, we, we uh, hope that we, we get positive data in more than, than one indication. So it's uh, expanding the potential of the product, giving these um, piece of data that a strategic partner can then move forward with multiple indications. And at the time, from an investment perspective, you know, we, we spread the risk. You know. Being in a volatile market, if, God forbid, uh, one of the first two trials that you expect readouts on should not be positive, do you have an alternate um, strategy in place to, to reduce cash burn or something like that? Well, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job if we wouldn't have uh, all these uh, contingency plans. But, but it's also important to emphasize here that, you know, what is a negative trial? Because, you know, even recently, the primary endpoint is uh, median progression-free survival. And you saw ev even some recent approvals where the, the product didn't meet the primary endpoint, but then had very good data in secondary endpoints like uh, response rate, like uh, overall survival. Uh, so, you know, we always see that is more of a degree of gray, you know, light gray, dark gray. Uh, so we hope that, you know, we, we are not in that situation. Uh, but again, you know, we, we have different plans in place to, to maintain the company uh, financed while we wait for the data in the, the next studies. And, and we are fortunate that we have a very, uh, very strong group of um, uh, key owners, you know. Just uh, seeing as you are, like you said, very well financed, and is the is the key to that that you have these strong owners, or is there any other trick up your sleeve to to secure that good financing? I think that so far, you know, it has been, of course, the 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 support from these strong owners that have participated from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, some of them, the 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 major ones support the company since the very start, 2011-12. Started as more of a, as a donation and then they have been investing, investing, investing. Uh, so it has been a combination of a strong group of, uh, of uh, owners. The fact that as a company we have been delivering, every time we promise something to the market we deliver. Uh, we don't overpromise, you know, so we, we, we reach that. The fact that we have had good, uh, um, good data, so far, uh, also that uh, in a very challenging period, uh, period for everybody, you know, but particularly for biotechs, that was the COVID of recruiting patients. We we managed to 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 recruit patients in studies. So this gave uh, some degree of confidence. So every time we had a we had a capital raise, and the last one was a year ago, you know, was uh, clearly oversubscribed. So we have had that uh, support, but also interest from investors to participate because they see the potential. So if, again, as I mentioned, with positive data, this will be transformational for the company, but also for the space, you know, because uh, uh, the, the, the vaccine is easy to administer, easy to produce, not very expensive. You don't need to do any biopsies. You don't need to inject into tumor. It's, it's simple to manufacture. We have already that in place. We, we have a commercial uh, manufacturing process in place for the start of phase three. So all the pieces have been have been in place and we have been delivering. Uh, so, you know, we just need now the data. And what we have been doing also is really to, to present the company to 
uh, several investors, you know, in the rest of Europe, in the US, particularly specialist investors. Uh, and basically, you know, the feedback we, we get is that, uh, you know, the program is solid, the, the studies are well designed, uh, but as everybody knows these days, both specialist investors and pharma require um, comparative data. So they say, okay, you know, you have everything, everything in place with the right quality, we just need the data. So I think that uh, with positive data, that will not be difficult to, to continue financing the company. Hi, Carlos. Thank you very much for a good presentation. Um, with so many companies developing therapies in combination with checkpoint inhibitors, what strategies are you using to recruit patients and essentially let them know what is different in the benefits to enrolling to your trial as opposed to a therapy with a checkpoint inhibitor? No, thanks. Uh, a very good question. Thanks for that. Because, you know, one of the, when, if you look in the majority of our studies, we are combining with the standard of care. So, you know, in the initial study in malignant melanoma, the patients are going to be treated with ipilimumab nivolumab. So we just add UV1 on top. So the patients are always going to receive the standard of care. And then we just add UV1. You know, I cannot tell you specifically what motivates, but the patients are informed of, you know, what has been the results so far. Again, it's it's not difficult to administer. It's safe. So I, I don't think there's many downsides for patients to, to participate. And, you know, and it always helps that, you know, they see they see some of the results with complete responses, partial responses that, that helps. But I think that the primarily... You know, the, the patients have the benefit that they receive the standard of care, so they are not forced, you know, and, uh, and then on top the benefit, potential benefit of the vaccine. You are uh, approaching uh, phase two results and you are in a number of indications. When do you see that uh, w when the results come in, uh, w does one result uh, make you uh, confident enough about the value of the company in terms of uh, reaching a deal? Or do you want to see even more results before being confident about where you want to be uh, in terms of, 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 um, of, of reaching a deal? I know, we, we see it as, um, as I said, you know, the, the first study that reads positive gives us the, the proof of concept that the vaccine works, stimulates the immune system because it will bring a benefit on top of the standard of care. So, so this will trigger, you know, most of the, of the discussions with, uh, with potential partners. Of course, they will see that there is the additional potential value in other indications. But, we, you know, we expect to have two, you know, two, two of them in the first half. So, so that, uh, that will help that, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, both of them have positive data to read out. And that definitely confirms the, the, the science. And with that, thank you so much, Carlos. Thank and you, everyone. Uh...